Hi, and welcome to the Drill Pro segment on parameter setup. The setup menu is accessed when we initially turn the display on. So let's go ahead and do that and we can take a look at exactly what I'm talking about. Now when we initially turn the display on, what we want to look for is a version number in the upper right hand display of the window. So let's go ahead and turn the display on and when we see the version number flash in the upper right hand window, we want to go ahead and press the enter key to enter into the parameter setup. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll turn the display on. You can see we have an LED test and then version 10. We'll hit the enter button. Now the first thing that we see queued up in the display is setup. We simply arrow down and the first parameter that we encounter is a direction parameter. And the direction parameter is basically where we can change the direction that the scales read. So to enter that, we simply push enter. And you can see that the three axes right here, uh, the value is either a zero or a one. So we can change the direction that the scale reads simply by pressing the appropriate axis that we want to change. Well, today we don't want to change the way that any of the scales read. So we'll go ahead and press the enter key and it'll go back to direction. We'll arrow down. And now we come to linear error compensation. Now linear error compensation is a way to increase the accuracy of the digital readout. And for most people it won't be a player at all. Uh, we simply don't need that type of accuracy. But for those who do, such as if you have an extremely long scale and maybe the scale has some sag in it in the middle, then you may want to enter the linear air compensation feature. Now the way to do that is to simply push the enter key and you can see that it's prompting us to enter the parts per million error in either one or all three of the different axes. But we don't need to do that so I'll, to get out of linear air compensation I simply push the enter key and then arrow down to my next parameter. Now the radius diameter feature would be helpful if you mounted this on a lathe application and you wanted to get a diameter reading instead of radius. So let's go ahead and enter this mode. To do so we press the enter key and you can see that all three axes are defaulted in the radius mode and if we wanted to change one of the axes such as the Y axis we simply push the Y key and it changes from radius to diameter. But with the mill, we don't want to do that, so I'll go ahead and push the Y key again. We'll hit the Enter button. I'll push the down arrow key. That leads me to my next parameter, which is the Z dial. Now the Z dial is mostly for a two axis machine. And what it does is it simulates having a third axis or a third scale. And what it's asking here is the amount of travel that you have in one hand wheel revolution on your machine. So let's go ahead and enter that and take a look at what it is. Now on this machine every hand wheel revolution represents five one hundredths of an inch or 0 .05. So for this machine that's what's been entered. Now again I'd like to say that this is truly only for a two axis display so with a three axis display, you really don't have to enter this value. It's not required at all. But if you'd like to, all you simply need to do is for every one hand wheel revolution of your Z scale, simply enter in the value that your vertical that you raise the mill head up. Now to get out of Z dial, I simply push the down arrow key and it takes me to my next parameter, which is dial increment. Now dial increment is very similar to Z dial. Dial increment is the distance that the hand wheel is calibrated in. So if I enter into this mode, you can see that every increment on my hand wheel represents four ten thousandths distance. Now to exit out of this mode, I simply hit the down arrow key and that brings me to R mode. Now R mode is used for arc machining, so let's go ahead and take a look at the choices we have here. I'll press the enter button and you can see that we can choose between Z step and max cut. Now max cut is a smoother 
process than Z step, but it also takes a little bit longer. If you're in a hurry and you just want a quick radius, then Z step would be the best option here. If you want to take a little bit longer and have more of a smoother arc radius, then I would definitely choose max cut as the value. Now to exit this mode, I simply press the enter button. It returns me to arm mode and I'll arrow down for the next parameter. And as we do, it brings us to the quit command. Now it's important to realize that if we make any sort of changes in the parameters menu, we have to go arrow down to the quit command and save those changes, if you will, in the display. So we'll go ahead and push the enter key and it brings us to our normal display. Well, that concludes the segment on parameters setup. I've shown you how to do it. It's easy to do, and now you can do it too.